bacteria, viral infection, lead, pesticides, mercury poisoning. All of these things can come from bad drinking water. Now we've all had an Uncle Jim who uh, takes a trip to Mexico and comes back and says, well, we had to brush our teeth with the Corona down there because the beer was safer than the water. My buddy Jim got dysentery for two weeks just by taking a shower and getting a little bit in his mouth. Mexico is the go-to country when we talk about dirty water. But what about China? Surely you cannot drink the water in China, right? Now to preface this, I have been sick in China more than I can count. And it's usually bacteria or viral related from food or water, at least I can assume so. But from typhoid, to dysentery, to food poisoning, to all kinds of crazy parasites that are probably living in my body, I'm literally like a Pokédex of foodborne illness. However, a lot of people that come over here and visit China suffer the exact same fate. My dad did when he came to visit. I've had friends that have been here for one week at a time or maybe even a year at a time. All of them have gotten sick, save for a few lucky individuals. I have no idea how they avoided the inevitable diarrhea in China. I guess they just got lucky. But it's not just expats or people traveling around China that suffer from all these crazy different foodborne illnesses or possibly waterborne illnesses. It's also the locals as well. I mean, ask a Chinese person, they're absolutely no stranger to having a funny tummy or, you know, diarrhea. It's very widely talked about here. Back when I used to teach adult clients, I used to have women say, oh, I'm sorry I'm late, I had diarrhea. I mean, that's the last thing you want to hear from a pretty lady. But everyone does it and it makes sense. No reason to discriminate, but that kind of privacy around diarrhea and being sick is not here in China and that kind of shows how common it actually is. But does it come from the water or the food or maybe both? Water is a bit of a tricky subject here in China. Over 60% of freshwater drinking sources are considered to be too polluted to drink. And it has nothing to do with bacteria or anything. We're talking about factory runoff and chemicals and heavy metals and all that kind of stuff. And that's after boiling. So you're left with 40% of water that can be treated to the point where you can drink it. And that kind of excludes a lot of things like the formation of kidney stones and potential issues with you know, drinking high levels of, of metal over your lifespan. Another disclaimer is locals don't actually drink tap water here. Uh, it's always boiled first and there's a reason for that. It'll probably get you sick. I had some friends that came over to live in China, two of them actually, and they swore that drinking the water was totally fine. They said they just had to slowly get used to it. So I really want to get to the bottom of this. Is it safe to drink the water in China? Now I get this kit shipped to me from America. I was actually from a patron patreon.com slash um, That's where I post all my extra content and you know what's going on in my life and behind the scenes stuff. But he was nice enough. Mr. Wishes to remain to be anonymous boy. Uh, sent me this water safe uh, city water test, which is really, really cool. And basically what this is gonna test for, and this is from the EPA standards, is it's gonna test for lead, chlorine, nitrates, and nitrites, whatever that, I guess we'll learn the difference there. E. coli, so also bacteria, uh, pesticides, hardness and pH. So basically this is a all-in-one test is going to tell us whether we have strains of E. coli or bacteria in here that can cause serious illness or death. Lead which causes developmental harm, neurological and kidney damage. Pesticides which is from agricultural uses linked to increased cancer rates. Definitely good. I'm gonna call that this is gonna have a lot of pesticides in it. Um, nitrates and nitrites are from fertilizers and animal waste. That's pretty disgusting. Causes development problems. Chlorine, uh, the byproducts can re increase cancer risk and bad taste and smell. Never smell chlorine in the water here. Hardness, causes lime scale and higher detergent use. That's, that doesn't sound too bad. And pH, so this uh, can cause heavy metal lead leaching or plumbing damage. So, you know what, we're not only going to do the tap water, which I have here, and I've, I've filled up quite nicely. Um, we're also gonna do the two most popular brands of drinking water here in China from the bottle. So these are the waters that you would probably buy if you were traveling around here. And these are the two most recognizable brands, at least for me. This particular one actually has all its pH stuff on here, <laughs> which is interesting. This one was bottled here in Shenzhen. Uh, so this is a, a local water, and I believe that's where the company comes from as well. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is I have extra powder uh, that's actually gonna grow this bacteria, but um, this original vial is the most important one for us, so we have to make sure we do this one properly because this is gonna be the tap water. That's what we really care about the most, so I'm gonna pour this in, I'm supposed to pour it, and then I'm going to cap this off. No fizzy explosions or anything. 
And then I'm supposed to shake vigorously. Shake your bacteria, shake your dysentery. Oh, I guess it needs to be a little more vigorous. I still see some powders in there. Uh, I'm supposed to put this in a warm place for 48 hours, so we're gonna have to come back. Next, we are going to do the lead and pesticide test. I feel like I'm doing some sort of disgusting like medical experiment. I guess we'll use this nifty little tea set here, Chinese tea set to uh, decant. And you're gonna drip this into this bad boy here. So we have exactly two dropperfuls of water in there. And what we're going to do is take our nifty little pesticide stick, which says pesticides right on it. And we're going to take our lead stick, which has little arrows pointed down on it too. And we're gonna put these test strips with the arrows facing down, as they say. And we drop them in there. And we're gonna wait 10 minutes. But do not disturb the vial during this time. Blue lines will appear on the strips. Take the strips out of the vial and lay them on a flat surface with the arrows pointing to the left. Read results. Okay, we'll see you guys in 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. Uh, we're gonna check for lead and pesticides now. It's lead and then here is pesticides. And I'm supposed to be looking at blue lines. I really feel like I'm checking a pregnancy test right now. This is a little bit, a little bit uncomfortable, but. Okay, so let's look at lead first. So for, for this one, this lead test, basically it says if the left line is darker than the right line, then the lead is negative. Let's see here, yeah, I do see a right line, very much so. So that would mean that there is lead, but it is within the safe limits. So basically there is lead in here, but it's not anything to worry about, which is cool. Now for pesticide, they are both equally dark. If I glance at it very quickly, it is almost exactly the same, um, which means if a test shows a positive result, your water sample contains lead or pesticides at a toxic level. So in this case, it does contain toxic levels of pesticides. So this tap water here in the cleanest area, um, where water comes from in China, has toxic levels of pesticides, which is terrifying because I don't think you can boil those out. <laughs> Pesticides uh, are linked to increased cancer rates, which makes a lot of sense. China has a very, very high cancer rate, in fact. So that is a little bit worrying. That's a little scary. Let's move on to the nitrate and the nitrite test instructions. This is gonna tell us if there's any fertilizer or animal waste inside of our water, which is very, very bad. Um, can cause serious health problems, especially amongst children in uh, brain development and stuff. So uh, this one's going to actually test the PPMs here, and we're gonna look at a color scale of purple. So let's open this bad boy up. And there's two pads on it. And what these pads are, are gonna do, we're gonna put them in the water which we have right here, our water sample. And we're gonna remove them after about one minute and then match them to the chart. So we're just gonna pop it in there and we're going to lay it onto these flat, this flat surface here. As you can see, there are two very, very soft colors on here. They're not really bright purple or anything, so it looks to be okay, but let's test. So the first one we're gonna hold up to here. So we're looking at 0.5 uh, parts per million for nitrates here, that is, well within the safe limit. Uh, and then here, the nitrite, we're looking at, I mean, it, it didn't even change. There's zero nitrites in here. So that looks pretty good. That's, that's a win, definitely, on this one. Pretty safe on the uh, nitrate. No fertilizer and no uh, animal waste. Okay, some fresh water in here. Now we have um, the last thing, which is the pH or hardness chlorine test. Yeah, with this one we have these familiar pads, like the last one. Uh, the yellow one's gonna test the pH. The middle green one is going to test the total hardness. And then the chlorine will be the last one here. So what we're gonna do here is hold the strip into the water sample and remove immediately, and then hold it level for 15 seconds. So 13, 14, 15, 
Let's go 16 for good measure. All right, now we have to compare to the chart. First thing we have to compare is this orangey. We're looking at bright orange here, almost red. So we're looking at a 7.5 pH. Uh, for the green, we're looking at almost a, between brown, brown and green here. So the hardness here uh, would be, let's say, 60 or 70. It's between those two colors. That's for the hardness there. So fairly hard water. And then the chlorine down here, we, like I said, we don't have chlorine in the water here as far as I'm concerned. I don't think we do. Now I'm not gonna bore you with the other tests. So I got the other test strips here, which we can try. I've just, uh, I've done the test on the Nongfu Springs and we are looking at even harder. Also, it went brown uh, way over the other, the tap water. So it's actually harder. And then also no chlorine. So there's still no, no chlorine in this one. Now I'm gonna do the Sabon, let me get the other strip. Now weirdly enough, the Sabon after dipping into that, I realized that the uh, pH was super low. So we're at around six for the pH, uh, similar level of hardness and also still no chlorine. Now, interestingly enough, both the Nongfu Spring and the Seibon tested well within the safe limits of the nitrite test. So there's no fertilizer or animal waste in these and also perfectly within the limits of lead and pesticides. So actually, these turned out to be much safer than the tap water on that front. So, can you drink the water in China? Well, the short answer is no. If you wanna drink tap water in China, you're kind of doomed to either sickness or really shortening your long-term lifespan because water in China varies in quality a lot. Like I said, this sample was taken within the city limits of one of the cleanest places to get water. Most places in China will actually have much worse results than this, so don't try to drink water in China without boiling it or buying bottled water first. I was actually quite surprised to see that the bottled water was not counterfeit and actually was well within the limits of safe drinking. If you enjoyed this video, please go to patreon.com slash 6 and you can request a video topic there, see behind the scenes stuff, and if you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much, Lowiners, and I'll catch you on the next one.